Good news, everyone. Hillary Clinton has promised that if she's elected president, she will shut down the genuinely corrupt, totally corrupt, thoroughly corrupt Clinton administration, sort of as a gift to the American people in exchange for her being granted the most powerful office on the face of the earth. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott, and this is your right angle on the promises that Hillary makes. It's almost a song. It's almost a song. Yes, this is what we've come to in America now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens when you don't have a press corps. We no longer have politicians denying their corruption. We now have politicians including in their political platform the promise to end corruption if they're elected. Remarkable world we live in, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. So what I thought I would do is ask uh, Steve and Scott, maybe go around a couple times, and see if you've heard anything, With we all keep our ears close to the ground, whether you've heard anything on other things that Hillary Clinton has promised that she would do if she's elected president, Steve, uh, have you got any latest bulletins coming in through uh, through your connections? Well, the one I'm most excited about is her promise to replace Hail to the Chief if elected with Mitch Ryder's Devil with a Blue Dress. I think that'll be a uh, <laughs> very exciting change, forward-looking thing. Now, Bill, I think you're looking at this all wrong. You know, we're uh, we're, we're, we're conservative, kind of libertarian, small government-minded people. And so many people, so many people, when they run for office, what kind of promises do they make? What they promise is to make somebody else stop doing something. Oh, if you elect me, I'm going to stop those bad people over there from doing drugs. Or if you elect me, I'm going to stop those bad people over there from coming over the border. If you elect me, I'm going to stop teachers from unions from ruining our school. No, no, no. Here is somebody who, for a change, isn't promising to make other people stop doing things. They're promising to stop doing something themselves. And isn't that a refreshing change of pace? I'm, I'm excited now. Scotty, he makes an excellent point. I don't know where all these corruption and liar and crooked charges come from. She's, she's plainly said that, uh, that if, if she's elected, uh, she'd be more than happy to, to, to shut down these horrific illegal uh, transactions that the Clinton Foundation's known for selling political influence for cash and so on. Isn't it time that we applauded this kind of honesty in a politician, this kind of forthrightness, this sort of, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to argue with somebody who, who's that honest and that open about their tremendously evil goals? Well, I, I think so. I think it's admirable. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard this definitively yet, but it's been rumored that um, she's actually going to go to New York State and create the 200,000 jobs that she promised when she was running for the Senate when a recent Wonderful. Washington Post story said that she hadn't actually generated any countable jobs in New York State. Um, my understanding is she is going to hire that those 200,000 people to go into a rotation, like a round robin thing to do pedicures on her. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just providing jobs and, and strengthening the economy, obviously, we'll, we'll be stronger together that way. Um, my understanding is also to take care of these little kind of recurring issue we have with her assistant, Huma Abedin's husband, Anthony Weiner. Um, it's it's got to be burning up his allocation um, on his smartphone and from his phone service to be able to have all these sexting conversations with uh, young um, co-eds around the country. So mm -hmm. my understanding is they're going to set up two special rooms in the White House, uh, one of them where they'll bring co-eds in and then the other one where Anthony Weiner will be. And between them, there'll be a little peephole. And so they can actually save the money that they would have spent spent on cell phone bills and things like that by just having them, you know, just face to face like that, but separated by a wall. I nothing see. on nothing untoward happening there. Uh, but I actually, the, the thing I'm hoping for most, um, and this is I believe she's made this promise, is that um, instead of uh, hosting emails on her own private server from now on, when she becomes president of the United States, Hillary Clinton is going to host her emails directly on Julian Assange's WikiLeaks server. Oh, Scott, you poke fun, but let's not disregard the stimulus effects of bathing in the blood of virgins. <laughs> my my understanding was that she was going to post all of her uh, government transactions on her Facebook page, uh, which, you know, really saves an awful lot of time in terms of disseminating the information. Uh, you know, some of this is rumors, obviously. Some of it's true. Some of it's rumors. One of the ones that I think probably is true was her promise that if elected, she'll go through SEAL training and will personally provide security for every embassy and consulate 
in the entire United States State Department. In other words, if there's a little bit of a problem coming up, somebody says we're not getting security, she's going to go down there with bandoliers crossed across her chest. She'll have an M60 across her hands, and she'll be on top of the roof running back and forth to make sure that that kind of naughtiness never happens again. Uh, I think she'll be personally screening every anti-Muslim film, too, to make sure that that, none of those movies causes that kind of thing again. Well said. It's going to take hours of her time to basically go through the Internet and uh, and make sure that there are no more, uh, you know, anti-Muslim films that might, might cause an attack like that on Benghazi. And as far as the job thing goes, too, I think, you know, you're talking about the employment in terms of 200,000 jobs back in New York. I mean, really, if you think about it, her duties as president will be so much more extensive than her duties as, as, as a candidate for presidency. We're talking about probably thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands people uh, hired to to prop her up at the podium, people to carry the special uh, intra, you know, hypodermic needle, the anti-seizure needle. You're going to have to have you know, a fair number of those people. There will be teleprompterists. Uh, there will be uh, there will be all kinds of you know, ventriloquists. There will be doctors on location, paramedics employed. Uh, you know, there's an incredible amount of money in what's it called with the um, you know, uh, like leg braces and back braces, kind of these bio. Uh, support kind of things. Physical She'll have an exoskeleton, my understanding. That's the word, an exoskeleton. Our first exactly. starship trooper president. As a matter of fact, let's just face facts, folks. Uh, she'd be far more comfortable if her head was in a giant vat of liquid on a robotic body uh, that could live forever uh, and, and, and watch the, um, you know, the, the progress of the progressives as they progress through hell. Uh, I'd love to tell you we were just joking about all this, but apparently we're not. This is actually what it's come to in America, ladies and gentlemen, particularly with this candidate. Uh, you know, our election coming up is, is, has reached, on some level, rock bottom. And what I mean by that is there is nothing now that Donald Trump would say that can further lower his numbers. I mean, there's just he said everything that would offend everybody. There's simply nothing else he can say that will lower his numbers. Uh, on the exact same uh, path, there is nothing that we can find out about Hillary Clinton's venality, corruption, criminal background, lying, that's going to change her numbers either. Everybody knows that she's a liar. And if somebody says, well, here's another lie of hers, not going to change. So that's what our country has, uh, has the, the pinnacle of our, of our uh, glorious republic now, is the battle of the negatives. The two most widely hated people in the history of the republic Taken down to bare metal, sandblasted down to the bare metal. Who do we hate the most? And I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to call a horse race. There's still plenty of time. But when it comes down, who do we hate the most? I'm going to, I'm going to call Hillary Clinton for this one. <sighs> it's a crapshoot, Bill. What do you get to do? do? Any of you guys want, do any of you guys want to throw in that final sigh before I wrap this goat rodeo up? Uh, can I do a head desk? Will that show up on the video? <sighs> no, I <laughs> I used to be happy. <laughs> I used to live well, in I'll tell you what. Let me let me just, for the sake of uh, the interest of balance, um, I, I I think Madam Clinton is actually getting this idea from the Trump campaign because you remember it was not so many months ago when Donald Trump was telling us that he has been for many years part of the crony network of business people giving money to politicians and expecting favors therefrom. And therefore, he was the only person who could go to Washington and clean that up. I alone can clean this up because who knows better than I <laughs> that How about this crony mess? Mess. That's, that's like putting these me deals in charge of the Volstead Act. That's exactly right. You know, these millennials don't even know who Bozo the Clown is, but honest to God, there are times when I wake up and I say to myself, if four days before the election, Bozo were to run for office on a write-in ticket, he'd win, and he'd win large, because he's neither of these two people. We'll keep you updated on all of this, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that are a little bit ashamed of living in a government like that, you can always become a member at BillWhittle.com and atone for all of our sins. We'd certainly be happy to do that. Because of our paying members, we're going to stay in this fight uh, through the um, through the election and beyond. So for those of you who are already members, thank you very much for your membership. It means a lot to all of us, and hopefully it means something to those of you out there. Uh, the good news is things are going to get a lot worse. Uh, and then the, 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 uh, the, the better news is that they will, in fact, get better after that. You can do an awful lot to the American people, but you just can't. You just can't squash them. Just keep that in mind as, as the weeks uh, roll by. For everybody here at our uh, Right Angle team, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. 